This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, if we are forced to perform phacal emulsification in a rexus which is a smaller, what are the precautions which uh, we need to take in these situations? Let me discuss this issue in this video. I'll be demonstrating the situations in two different cases and let me begin by starting with the first case. This is an eye of a middle-aged patient who has this intumescent cataract and uh, plan is to do two-stage rexus and I'm very careful to control the size of rexus and eventually I end up with a rexus which is about maybe three and a half to four millimeter. At this point, I was thinking it's not too small, so let me perform phaco through this rexus itself and then enlarge the rexus after the emulsification of the nucleus. So that was my plan. When you're trying to phaco in such a small rexus, there are a few points to keep in mind. When you're trying to chop the nucleus and do lateral separation, there is always a chance that inadvertently the chopper uh, during the lateral separation maneuvers could be tugging at the rexus margin. So that has to be avoided because these capsules will be very thin and flimsy and they can just tear even with a minutest drag. So these are not very healthy capsules. So we need to be aware of these facts. And to prevent this from happening, we need to be conscious of the position of the chopper and follow some basic principle which will allow us to divide the nucleus without using any excessive force. This is a patient whose nucleus is not very dense. It's probably the most ideal density nucleus to chop. So these are the settings. The left hand that is my chopper is going down beneath nearer the posterior plate and when I reach there the amount of energy required is extremely less it just separates with just the minutest of touch and keep an eye on the chopper whether it is touching the rexus margin throughout the procedure if you want to divide the nucleus without having any excessive lateral movements it is possible the only trick here is to place your second instrument deep down near the posterior plate. If you follow this simple principle, nucleus division can be achieved without using any excessive lateral forces. Now that all the nucleus has been divided into smaller fragments and each of these fragments needs to be consumed. And because we have a good landmark of the rexus, you can see that the fragments are being emulsified at the plane of the rexus margin itself. And even though the emulsification process is happening quite rapid, care is ensured that the plane of the emulsification is much posterior. It's at the level of the rexus margin. And this is going to ensure us that the first day post-op, the corneas are going to be crystal clear. Of course, this eye, the nucleus was relatively soft. So division of the nucleus and emulsification was not at all an issue. The lens is being implanted now. Time to enlarge the rexus. Tangential cut is given using a micro scissors. Then I'm grasping the thin flap with the forceps and then enlarging the rexus. Similar thing is done in the other quadrant as well. So we needed to do a fake emulsification in a very small rexus, which could be done very safely by following certain basic principles. And I could enlarge the rexus to the appropriate size after implantation of the lens. And this is how the I looked at the end of the case and these are the first day pictures. Now moving on to the second case. This is again a white cataract. Again I was expecting an intermittent lens. And I begin by making a slightly smaller rexus. I end up having a rexus which is about 4 or 4.5 millimeter. The problem with this nucleus is this is relatively denser. It's definitely much more denser than the first case. So let's see how things turn out. So no hydrodissection directly I'm going to fake emulsification process and these are the settings. I'm 
Once the superficial epinucleus is aspirated, time to chop the nucleus. The patient has deep set eyes and uh, there's a lot of pooling of the fluid which is being aspirated actively by uh, my assistant. The tip is buried into the nucleus. Retrospectively, I think the burying was not deep enough. And as I'm doing my vertical chopping, there is a slight torque. Nevertheless, the nucleus is split, at least in the distal half. And the chopper is then progressively placed at deeper planes. It requires a couple of attempts to achieve a full thickness crack in this distal portion of the nucleus. Please note that during lateral separation, because the chopper is being placed at a deeper plane, the during lateral separation, pressure is not exerted at the rexus margin or the rexus margin is not being stretched at. Time for the second chop. This time the tip is buried sufficiently deep enough and the chop is initiated. Again, we can notice that it requires at least two to three subsequent attempts of lateral separation by placing the chopper at a deeper plane to achieve a full thickness crack of the posterior plate and during all these maneuvers, the rexus margin was not stretched. Similarly, the nucleus division process is being continued. The same principles are followed. There is this one moment wherein there is a slight tug at the rexus margin during the lateral separation maneuvers. Other than this particular moment, most of the lateral separation maneuvers did not induce any pressure or tug at the rexus margin. Now all the fragments are already created, time to emulsify each of them. They are grasped with the phaco tip and then mobilized anteriorly at the level of the rexus margin and then each of these fragments are emulsified in a very controlled manner. As I keep telling that the lens chatter and turbulence is controlled by using the power judiciously which is controlled by our foot pedal. By going in a little bit slower we can control things better and uh, the turbulence and lens chatter can be minimized. This will ensure that the endothelial trauma is minimized. Uh, since this is a dense nucleus I would always like to replenish the antechamber with OVD, the dispersive OVD goes in first, just beneath the endothelium and then the HPMC goes into the bag. The remaining fragments are then emulsified. Here is a slightly bigger fragment so which I am dividing into two parts and then consuming them. I replaced my second instrument uh, with a dialer now. Initially, I was using a sharp tipped chopper. This is a regular Sinsky hook. The purpose of the second instrument is to just act as a shield so that the fragments which are getting emulsified don't run away and hit the endothelium. Eventually, all the fragments are emulsified and the lens is implanted. I am going to enlarge the rexus using the same principles of giving a tangential cut and then holding a flap with the forceps and then enlarging the rexus. And these are the first day post-op pictures. To summarize, okay, this was a small discussion on the principles to follow when we are doing phacoemulsification in an eye where the rexus is less than the ideal size. We need to remember that during the chopping and lateral separation maneuvers, there is always a risk, although very small, uh, that the rexus can get damaged during lateral separation maneuvers. Hence, it's important to follow certain basic principles, which is to ensure that the second instrument, which is chopping and doing lateral separation, it needs to be placed much more posteriorly, nearer to the posterior plate, during the lateral separation maneuvers. This ensures that we use very less energy to divide the nucleus, and at the same time, there's hardly any lateral movement which is going to stretch the rexus margin and then subsequently damage it. So this one principle of placing the second instrument deeper during lateral separation maneuvers is going to take care of most of the problems. This message is for my younger colleagues who are going to try out this technique. I think the younger surgeons should practice this maneuver mentally more than 100 times. How you are going to place the second instrument, 
deep inside and then lateral separate. So practicing this mentally before we venture out on the first case is really going to help you and boost your confidence. Uh, wishing you all the best and thank you for watching.